Hi, my name is Sarah Gregory and I'm a wildlife biologist for the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife in Bend. In front of me over here is Highway 97 and highways like this that traverse the state are, are a huge barrier to almost every kind of wildlife, um, including mule deer. We see a lot of what we call deer vehicle collisions. About a, a thousand deer are killed a year on Highway 97 between Bend and Klamath Falls. And we're seeing at the same time an estimated 40% decline in mule deer populations. So roads are contributing some. There's lots of, there's lots of variables contributing to this decline in their population. But we see about one in five mortalities in mule deer caused by roadways. So this is a huge concern to ODFW as well as ODOT and the traveling public. Hi, my name is Sydney Bowman and I work for the Oregon Department of Transportation as the Wildlife Passage Coordinator. Uh, today we're out here on site of the Gilchrist Wildlife Undercrossing Construction Project. And today the crews are um, excavating dirt from underneath the new wildlife bridge that will um, help mule deer and elk cross underneath the highway. So one of the reasons this location was chosen was because it's a, one of the highest density collision areas on US 97. So we have a lot of deer and elk that are hit here um, trying, when they cross the highway. So ODFW sponsored a seven year study and we collared hundreds of deer and we followed their movements between winter and summer ranges and we found that this part of Highway 97 was what we call a hot spot where we see a high density of deer vehicle collisions. And so fortunately ODOT had this project already in place and it's kind of you know, solving two problems at the same time. They need, they need a passing lane and we need passage for deer. The crossing structure itself is important, but what's also important is the fencing that will be built that will funnel animals to the structure so they can find it and, and teach their fawns how to use it as they go between summer and winter habitats. Deer are moving from winter range up to summer range tracking food that has a higher nutritional value. So they get up to summer range and they're consuming a lot of herbaceous forbs and that kind of material and that helps them gain fat and a lot of protein that they need to get them through the winter. And behind me, you're looking at a, a pretty good representative of what we would call summer range, and in some cases, transition range for mule deer. And this is the peak migration period in May and into June, when deer are crossing from their winter range, and they're moving up the hill into the summer range. So this hotspot here on 97, where we have a lot of deer vehicle collisions, is just one of many throughout the state. And unfortunately, we don't have a dedicated source of funding to install projects such as these. This project has relied really heavily on a consortium of public and private partnerships. And we're, we're managing to pull together the funds, but we're lacking that for other projects around the state.